So, in the previous lecture, we saw that given a topological space, given a locally compact topological space, space x, if it is not compact, then we can compactify it. So, what did it mean by saying that we can compactify it? It meant that, so uh, we can construct a compact topological space X X hat yeah, such that X is sitting inside X hat as a dense. So, we call that when we say compact topological space X, in our definition of compactness, we need, uh, when we say compact topological space X hat, in our definition of compactness, we need X hat to be host of, and we had proved that X hat is host of as a dense uh, subset, as a dense open subset. And in fact, X hat was obtained is just x disjoint union a point p you know, right so there is a picture we can keep in mind while we so let's take the real line the real line is uh, locally compact but it's not compact and we can take this point p not over here so when we compactify the real line let's see what we get so instead of making the picture like this we will make the real line like this yeah and this point p not is here So, we call that there were two kinds of open subsets. One kind was type A open subsets. These were open subsets of X, right. And the type B open subsets were as follows. We take any compact subset of R so, for instance, we can take this union of two compact subset, uh, subsets of the real line. So, that, will, that is going to be compact and we just take the complement yeah, of compact subspaces. Complements in X hat. Of compact subspaces. Or in other words, uh, what we have specified is what are the open subsets? The open subsets which contain P naught are exactly complements in X hat of compact subspace of X. Okay. So in the same way, we can make see another example of R two. So uh, instead of making our R two like a plane, we can make it as a sphere. So okay. so from this. In the picture, it is clear that one point compactification, it seems that of R should be S1, right. And uh, similarly, if we take R2 of S1, I should make a dotted line. So, this is our R2 and we can imagine the point P0 over here. So, R2 is also a locally compact and therefore, uh, we add this point P0. So, the one point, comp so what are the neighborhoods open subsets which contain P0? These are the open subsets of type B. So, these will be, we can take any compact subs subset of R2. Let us say this is D. Yeah. So, then D will be somewhere over here. Is D and we just take the complement of D, yeah. So this X hat minus D. Okay, so yeah. 
So it's useful to keep this picture in mind. So let us begin today's lecture. So let's uh, write down what we proved last time. Let x be a locally compact topological space. which is not compact. Okay. Then there is a compact topological space x hat along with an inclusion to x hat such that x hat is just i f x union a point which we call p0 i is continuous i f x is an open subset of x hat i of x is dense in x hat okay so uh, let us make the following easy remark note that i from x to i of x is a homeomorphism right so we have already seen that i is continuous and the image of i is lands inside i of x and it's a bijection here yeah? so we have already seen or we know that I is a bijective continuous map I is a bijective continuous map right so thus to show that I is a homeomorphism it is enough to show that if u contained in x is open then i of u is open in i of x right but now note that i of u is the same set u and as u is uh, is a subset of type A is an open subset of x hat of type A. This implies that I of u is open in x hat and, and as I of u is contained in I of x and so also in I of x. Right? So thus I is a homeomorphism. Okay. So this theorem we had proved last time, and uh, in the previous lecture I had mentioned that uh, this particular one point there could be many one there could be many compactifications of a locally compact topological space, but this particular compactification has a very nice and special property so which is what we will see in this lecture so the topological space x hat has the following property
Okay, proposition. Let T be a compact topological space. Which contains X as an open subset. Okay. Uh, so, what is the meaning of this sentence? Right. So, this means that. there is an inclusion j from x to t it's an inclusion of sets such that j of x contained in t is an open subset and j from x to j of x is a homeomorphism So there is a inclusion says that let me also write j is continuous. Uh, okay, so then there is a unique map. So what we have is we have x over here, and we have this inclusion j. J is a continuous map from uh, x to t. And the image, so let's say the image is g of x, and this is a subset of t, right? There's an open subset, and we have this map like this, and we also have the map i also satisfies these properties, right? This x hat, this is also open. open and x hat, right? So then, there is a unique map f from t to x hat. There is a unique map f from t to x hat such that the following two things happen. f compose j is equal to i and f of t minus j of x is equal to this p naught. So, x hat has this point at infinity which is p naught. Okay. So, let us try to see what this means by means of an example. So, let us let us say x is this open disk And let us say I embed the open disk into this closed disk. Right. On the other hand, the one point compactification, this is j, this is i, the one point compactification looks like, so I have to add a point at infinity, so it will look like something like this. Okay. Yeah. So this point is P zero, right? So what is F doing? Uh, F is collapsing all of the boundary. F. Uh, so, f collapses the set t minus j of x, which in this case is this black boundary. Right? 
to the point E0, right? And F is uh, completely determined. at other points by the condition f compose j is equal to i okay so uh, we want to say so this in this example f does this but okay so let's say that let's try to prove this proposition which is that there is a unique such map f okay so proof so of course f is continuous there is a unique continuous map okay. that's the assertion so proof mm. so the map f has been defined set theoretically on all of t so this this map has been defined set theoretically on all of t so how do we do it so on j of x define f to be so uh, this is j of x j is a homeomorphism from x to j of x so we apply j inverse this x and then we apply i so this goes to i of x This makes sense as j from x to j of x is a homeomorphism. Right? Uh, and okay, so we don't need homeomorphism right now, so we just need bijective. It's a bijection. Right, we just need bijection right now because as of now we are really trying to, to say that f is defined set theoretically right and outside on t minus g of x we have defined f to be the constant map p naught right so thus uh, the map of sets f is completely determined right and so it's unique so we only have to show that f is continuous So uh, for this, so let V contained in X hat be an open subset. Right. So let's first assume that assume that P zero P zero does not belong to B. Right. So in that case, the open subset is contained somewhere over here, right? So, uh, right? So then, it is easily checked. This is an easy trivial check that f inverse of v is completely contained inside g of x, right? So as a result, so this shows that. f inverse of v is actually equal to f restricted to j of x inverse of v okay right. now notice that so note that f restricted to j of x is from j of x to x j inverse and this composed with i 
to i of x i and as j from x to j of x is a homeomorphism this implies that j inverse is continuous this implies that i compose j inverse is continuous so this implies that f restricted to j of x is continuous right so this implies that combining these we get that f inverse v is equal to f restricted to j of x inverse v which is open right so thus if p p0 does not belong to v then f inverse of v is open right so now let's consider the situation if p0 belongs to v then x hat minus v is compact right and contained once again contained in i of x okay so once again f inverse of this since it is contained in i of x is equal to f restricted to j of x inverse of x hat minus v right but this is a compact subset of i of x right uh, and this set is in fact equal to f restricted to j of x is equal to i compose j inverse and uh, both these are homeomorphisms so this is from j of x to x j inverse and this is to i of x right and both these are homeomorphisms so this implies that f restricted to j of x is a homeomorphism right so which implies that f restricted to j of x inverse is a homeomorphism is continuous we just need continuity right so this implies that f restricted to j of x inverse of x hat minus v uh, is a compact subspace of uh, j of x and so also of t right so this shows that uh, f inverse of x hat minus v is a compact subspace of t and so also a closed subspace of t right so this implies that but f of x hat minus v f inverse of x hat has f inverse of x hat minus v is equal to t minus f inverse of v this implies that f inverse of v is an open subspace of t right so this proves that f is continuous so this completes the proof So we will end this lecture here.